Welcome to the Fitness Oracle Daily Show. I am your host, John Katsavos, and today it's M&M Monday, and we're talking about the myths, con- myths and misconceptions surrounding the myth behind stretching. Be forewarned, I may get a little hot this week multiple times because of the way I feel about trainers who use this term. Not just trainers, martial artists as well. Um yoga practitioners, anybody in the health and wellness space that uses this term, or doctors, I have very, I have a very strong uh, feeling about this. I do not like it. It's misused. It's, it's wrong to use this term. And it's mostly because we're trying to simplify this term to the point to numb it down to think that you, the listener, the the client, can't comprehend what we're trying to explain. That's why I get so agitated. I feel that you're smart enough to understand this concept. They do not. And it bothers me like you can't even imagine. So why is this term not true? This term is not true simply because it is a physical impossibility to stretch anything on the human body. Everything has a permanent attachment to something. In order for you to stretch something, you have to be able to take one point, point A, let's call it, and point B, and pull them apart from each other. That, the, the medium, the, the thing that is in between point A and point B is being stretched past its limits, its normal range of function. That's what I'm going to use. Okay. So in order for, in order for us to stretch, let's say the, let's say the bicep. Okay. In order for us to physically stretch the bicep, we would have to cut the bicep either at the insertion which is the furthest part, which is the furthest part away from the center of the body or the origin, which is the closest part of closest attachment to towards the center of the body. We'd have to cut one of those and pull the bicep further down. Let's say the arm. That is a stretch. We as quote unquote professionals. And that, as you can tell, that's a physical impossibility without a knife or a surgeon. You cannot do it. You can't do it because it's permanently attached to somewhere in the shoulder and in the, and just below your elbow, it's permanently attached there unless you snap it. End of story. Why do we use this term? Why would a trainer, trainer, health professional, health and wellness expert, uh, specialist in sports medication, in sports medicine, doctors, why do we use it if we know that? Quite frankly, some of them just don't. They don't get it. And it's those professionals that I have the biggest resentment towards. I do not like them. I do not want to do business with them. If you think that you can stretch a a peck and you're trying to argue with me, just, I don't want to deal with you. I don't want to deal with you. If you're using stretching to explain the reality of what we're trying to do, then you and I can have a conversation. So what are we trying to conceive towards you, trying to explain a complicated uh, idea in a simplistic terms so you can comprehend what is what we're trying to achieve? When we quote-unquote stretch a, 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 a joint area, which the elbow you cannot stretch, you can't stretch the elbow. I don't care who you are, 
there is a maximum range of extension that you can do at the elbow. You cannot pass it because if you pass it, then you break the actual bone that's attached to it. I won't even get into that one because that, that's going to really set me off. What are you trying to achieve? What are Why are we using this easy term? Well, we're, we're trying to use this easy term to make you uh, understand what we're trying to do. What are we trying to do? We are trying to increase your range of motion. Now, there's two parts of range of motion. There's passive range of motion and active range of motion. I like to call it controlled and uncontrolled. The proper term is active and passive range of motion. So passive range of motion means that when the when the joint is completely relaxed, the amount of range of motion that you actually, uh, somebody else can put you in. That can vary, vary based off of injury, based, based off of structure, based off of whatever it is to the individual. Active or controlled range of motion. Active range of motion is the, the range of motion that you can control from point A to point B. So normally human beings have, an, have a passive range of motion in the shoulder, oh, let's take, let's, we'll, we'll do the shoulder of without any, if you look at the structure of the shoulder and all the physical um, obstacles that come into play, it can go from the side of the body to around to the back. So it has roughly around from a 360 degree circle. It probably has about 280 degrees range of motion in three dimensions. Now, and it, technically the, the, the architecture of the, of the shoulder actually it does have 360 degrees range of motion uh, in three dimensions. However, we have obstacles that will not allow it, like the physical body, the head. Um, it, it won't allow it. But it does have that capability. Now, most of that in most people is passive, meaning it's uncontrolled. Like if you relax the joint and if you're fully asleep, fully unconscious, somebody can grab your arm and do the full range of motion. Active range of motion or controlled range of motion is you being able by yourself to move in that range of motion. That is smaller than the passive. Our goal as physical, professional trainers, personal trainers, yoga therapy, yoga, yogis, um, Pilates experts, martial artists, you name it, whatever. If you're in the health and wellness space, the goal for them is to increase your active range of motion. How do we increase your range of motion? Well, we're the way that we, the way that we're supposed to do it is to take your limb, take it just past the active range of motion into into passive range of motion and slowly start to introduce control and strength through the new range of motion, increasing that range of motion. So you see, it has nothing to do with stretching. It feels like a stretch because your muscle and your nervous system is, is, is conditioned to stay in that range of motion that you can control by yourself, so it will quote unquote feel like a stretch, but it's not really a stretch. By definition, it is not a stretch. We're just increasing the amount of controlled range of motion that you can do by yourself. I know that sounds complicated, 
And that's why we tried to numb it down so that you could, so we can explain this complicated system that we're trying to achieve to increase your, I don't want to use the term because it hurts to use the term, but the flexibility of the person, the individual, that, that term also falls directly in line with stretching and it drives me crazy. Um, it's not flexibility. Um, we may do an, we may do one just on flexibility. <laughs> I'll write, I'll make a note of that flexibility. Okay. I wrote a note. I'm going to do another one on flexibility, maybe in a couple of months, but imagine if a trainer explained it to you that way, you would understand it deeper without saying, oh yeah, I'm just stretching you know, to get my flexibility up, be more nimble. You're <sighs> more terms that drive me crazy. Your body does not want to be nimble. Your body wants to have tension. And we will go through that when we talk about um, flexibility, because that's just, whew, it's going to be a hot week, hot week, hot week. Anyways, tomorrow, I hope that clears it up for you. I hope you understand that we are not stretching. We are increasing your active range of motion, range of motion that you can control. That's what we're doing. Simple as that. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're dropping another episode with uh, the author, an author from Tomorrow, we're dropping a new episode with an author from Four Horsemen Publications, Danielle M. Orsino. Um, after being an, inspired by working as a nurse, helping a patient in an IV room, she came up with an entire series of books called The, Bur the Birth of Fay. She is a, has an unwavering passion for cosplay, comics, and martial arts. And um, as I said before, I always love bringing on martial artists because we, they, uh, we all have a very interesting perspective on life and punches and pain and fear and all that fun stuff. So it's going to be a good episode. As always, I want to thank you all for watching this episode. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble, please don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell, and share this episode as it may help somebody who's suffering. If you're listening to this on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, iHeartRadio, or whatever streaming service that you use, please give us a five-star rating and a positive review as it will help us reach out to more people that are suffering from mental health issues. Before you go, I'd like to invite you to keep the conversation going by signing up to your free account at Pod Inbox. Over the years, we've discovered that in order for us to, to achieve the greatness that we're destined for, we can't do this alone. And so in order for you to find your place back in this world, we have come across this amazing tool called Pod Inbox, where we can get together and discuss this topic even deeper. All you have to do is click on the link in the show notes and sign up for your free account and find out for yourself how powerful community really is. Until tomorrow, you guys have an awesome day.